So even though protein powder isn't necessary for building muscle, it's incredibly convenient and provides a high quality profile of amino acids. Unfortunately, not all protein powders are created equally, and the supplement industry knows exactly how to take advantage of new and unsuspecting buyers in order to maximize their profit margins while minimizing their quality. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over five things you should look for on a protein label to determine if it's worth your money. So number one is to be aware of amino spiking. One of the reasons protein powders are considered high quality is because they are a complete protein source that includes the nine essential amino acids that your body can create on its own. But if the company you're buying from is loading their powders up with cheap amino acids, then it defeats the purpose of purchasing what you thought was a high quality protein source. Now, how exactly do companies get away with this in the first place? Well, to put it simply, protein powders are tested for their nitrogen content per serving rather than each amino acid present. But since every amino acid contains nitrogen, you can see how this can encourage companies to skimp out by adding low quality quality cheap amino acids that don't really contribute to protein synthesis. Now this isn't the case for every single company, but some will try and cut corners. This is how brands can offer you 25 grams of protein per serving, yet perhaps only 10 to 15 grams of it is actually high quality protein. So how exactly can you identify amino spiking? Well the answer is in plain sight. All you have to do is look at the ingredient list. Since the regulations require that each individual ingredient is listed in decreasing order of weight, the first ingredients should be listed are either whey concentrate concentrate, whey isolate, or a blend of whatever protein source you're looking for. Additionally, because these blends add up to a complete protein, they automatically include all 20 amino acids. So you shouldn't see any individual amino acids listed. If you see something like glycine or taurine listed individually, you can bet that you're not getting the best protein powder for your money. Likewise, another trick that companies may pull is to add creatine into their powder, which is usually known as creatine spiking. Creatine is another fantastic supplement that aids in gym performance and has a pretty good reputation. So seeing it added to your protein supplement seems like a good thing, right? Unfortunately, no. Creatine contains nitrogen, and since it's cheaper than protein, companies may use it as a substitute to boost the nitrogen content of their protein powder. So while you might think that you're getting the best of both worlds, in reality, you're getting a watered down product. Number two is making sure that the leucine content of the serving size is about 10%. Leucine is an essential amino acid and is often thought of as the initiator of muscle protein synthesis while also suppressing muscle protein breakdown. For those reasons alone, you want an adequate amount of leucine in your powder. So for instance, if you have a 25 gram serving size, ideally the leucine content should be 2.7 grams or close to that amount. Number three is protein per serving. So companies are not obligated to list out the amount of each amino acid. They only need to list the total gram amount of protein per serving. And as I mentioned earlier, that amount is measured by the nitrogen content. But one thing you want to also be on the lookout for is the ratio of protein per serving size. For instance, let's say a company promises 25 grams of protein from a 32 gram scoop. That means that the protein content is 78%, which really isn't bad, it's pretty standard. If you then encountered another company that promised 20 grams of protein from a 32 gram scoop, that means that you're getting about 60% protein. Aside from the lower protein percentage, usually this means that a protein supplement has several additives. These additives may not be bad for most people, but they can cause stomach discomfort. Now, as I said, all ingredients must be listed on the label. So an easy way to see what you're getting per scoop would just be to see how many ingredients are listed. While I don't necessarily like to say that you should judge a protein source simply by how many or how few ingredients it has, protein powder really should offer just protein and maybe a few other ingredients for flavor and mixability. In my opinion, a good baseline is at least 70% protein per serving. And the fourth sign is price. Now protein powder continues to increase in price and while that is unfortunate, competition amongst companies will usually settle the price at a certain range. Some companies may have slightly more expensive powders based on what they offer and how they may be processed, while other companies' protein powders may be a bit cheaper. But if you find a protein powder whose price seems almost too good to be true, then unfortunately it probably is. An inexpensive protein powder is probably a cheap powder. Now the best way to determine if a protein powder is cheap is not to base it on the total price, but rather on the price per serving. So if you find a protein powder that offers 70 servings, yet it's $30 cheaper than another brand that offers 70 servings, it should raise some concerns. The last thing I wanna mention is not to be deceived by advertising. In the end, protein powder is just a very useful tool to help you reach your total daily protein goal, which is ultimately the most important thing when it comes to protein intake. Beyond that, there's very little else a protein powder can and should do. And I say this because brands will sometimes try and market themselves as a replacement for a meal or something that's a must have. 
I think protein powder is great because it's a high quality source, it's convenient, and because you can get different flavors of it, which can help with flavor fatigue if you're tired of consuming chicken. So to sum it up, there are a few things you want to be on the lookout before you purchase a protein powder. Number one, make sure that the product isn't spiked with free form amino acids like taurine or creatine. It's quite easy to see this by simply reviewing the label and making sure that the first ingredients are whey concentrate, isolate, or a blend. Because ingredients are listed in order of their weight percentage, this should be the first ingredient. Number two is to make sure that your protein powder has at least 11% leucine or 25% BCAA per serving. These amino acids are crucial in the muscle protein synthesis process and is partially what makes a protein powder so good. Number three, make sure that your protein per serving is at least 70% protein. You can once again just look at the ingredient list to determine what percentage of protein you are getting per scoop. For some people, too many additives can cause stomach to discomfort, but they also lower the amount of protein you get per serving size. Number four, make sure your protein powder is priced competitively. If you find a powder that is substantially less expensive than other brands, odds are it's probably a cheap quality. And number five, remember that protein powder is just another food source that can provide convenience in your diet, but it is not a must have. Anyway, I hope this video provided you with some insight when it comes to purchasing protein powder. It's unfortunate that scams such as these exist, but with this knowledge, you should be able to identify which which protein powders deserve your hard-earned money. That's it for today's session. Let me know if you have any thoughts or questions in the comments section. If you found this video helpful, consider crushing that like button and subscribing. But until then, I'll see you all next time.